Hello, everyone, and welcome to Big Talk here on Global Television. A pleasure to have you join us tonight on the program. There's a lot of tension in Edo State, most especially as the state prepares for the 21st September 2024 election in the state. Uh, most recently on Thursday, there was shooting at the exit gate of the Benin Airport, uh, which left the two leading parties, the ruling People's Democratic Party and the opposition party, the APC, trading acquisition on who was responsible. The shooting left the policeman dead and others injured, with the APC standard bearer on Monday. Igbaolo attacked while the, while the state government and the reinstated deputy governor, uh, Philip Shaibo, has traded blame over who was responsible for the incident. But away from that, Philip Shaibu has effected to all progressive Congress over the course of the weekend, uh, which also is creating a lot of tension and heat as the state prepares for the election. There, there are a whole lot of situation, and the fact that uh, this is a state that was once APC state and now PDP state. And then we we'll look at the issue right there and looking at possible outcome of this election. We have Labour Party, we have APC, we have PDP. These are strong major political parties that are waiting to contest for the September. I mean, we have other political parties. But the tension right there in the door state is much. And uh, we'll look at how a PDP deputy governor moving to APC, and what it means for People's Democratic Party, and what it also means for APC, and how they manage some of the allegations and attacks coming into the party. My guest tonight is the APC campaign council member, Aruna Bremo, of course, has followed the recent event and understand the position of the party in all of this. Good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening, Mike. Yes, uh, let me first start with um, the recent event, Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the Philip Shaibu was returning from Abuja uh, to uh, Edo State, but met with a whole lot of uh, drama. And now we can't really ascertain. But let's know the position of the APC in all of these uh, back and forth. Yeah, I think uh, the position of the APC is mm. a position that has been confirmed uh, so far and uh, by the law enforcement uh, agency, the Nigeria police, who are by constitution and power to do thorough investigation into what happened. But from the point of logic and uh, from the videos that uh, we all have watched, we saw what happened on that uh, fateful day, the dastardly acts of uh, the state government uh, Agents masquerading themselves as a uh, Edo security network, the vigilante group of Edo state government, who mounted at the exit gates of the Bini airport when Philip Shabu and the um, distinguished Senator Mondi Bevolo arrived at the airport. Uh, it should be of note that the commissioner of police was right there at the airport. His attention was drew by the state uh, uh, youth leader of uh, the APC. Uh, Tony Kabaka mm. to the fact that the Edo uh, security network uh, goons were at the exit gate brandishing weapons and carrying AK 47s and guns. He actually went to, if you watch the whole thing from the eyewitness report, he went to the exit gate attempting to be talking to them. It was, seems as if he was making some calls, and before you know what was going on, the police commissioner left through the entrance gates, which is the entry gate, no longer the exit gates, you know, and just abandoning or leaving the APC and its uh, governorship candidate and the uh, deputy governor of the state that was uh, at the airport to the mercies of uh, God. And uh, at the end of the day, as they were processing and walking through the exit, the is uh, the Edo Security Network uh, hoodlums. I call them hoodlums because in the, as far as Nigeria law is concerned, they are not security, they are not legal security, they are makeshift because of the situ uh, security situation in Nigeria. You now have state governors creating makeshift uh, vigilante, empowering them with guns to fight crimes, mm -hmm. but now it's being used to fight political opponents. And they open fire. The and uh, so uh, logic should point us to the fact that mm -hmm. the Edo State uh, 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 Deputy Governor cannot in any way, organize thugs to shoot at him himself. But it was looking as if it was a retaliation. Well, the supporters of Shaibu were also retaliating, and this also. No, it review. was the police. It was the security, the, the, the security attached to the deputy governor and the distinguished senator that we have not tried to quell. If you look at the video, you will see where the guns were being, uh, 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 the, the shooting was coming from. So the police and the other security, the DSA, they were all 
they were processing on the road, airport road. So does so, it looks like it was, it, it was a plan issue. Of course, what, what were they doing at the exit gates? What is the business of the the thugs, lawyer in the name of uh, a those security network, lawyer to the state government, doing to come and block the exit gate of the Bini airport? Was, was there a position of the, um, the the police? Because we understand shortly after uh, the court ruling, there was an injunction. Uh, uh, no, there was nothing like an injunction. No, 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 no. Let's, this is another opportunity to clear it. The court gave a declaration. Hmm. It's not a court order. A declaration that Philip Shabu, Honorable uh, 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 Philip Shabu, is the legally recognized deputy governor of Edo State, where you are declared deputy governor. He won an election, a joint ticket with the governor mm. in 2020. He has a mandate in Edo State, and it was that mandate was legally truncated with the burst and the unfortunate impeachment process, kangaroo impeachment that was carried out by the Edo State House of Assembly members. What, and that was premise, on that premise, he went to court, and court gave a declaration, declaring him, reinstating him. That, what it means, that declaration reinstated him as the legal and authentic deputy governor of Edo State. And what the Edo State government was trying to do, they were trying to file stay of execution. You can file stay of execution on an order when the court give an order. This is a pure declaration reinstating your mandate back to you, a mandate that you rightly won. You were voted for in 2020 under the Shabu, uh, uh, Obaseki Shabu tickets. So it's not a case of right. a court order or court right. judgment. Right. So it's a statement. Right. They try to get a, a, a stay of execution. The application, the stay of execution supposed to be granted by the same judge that declared, mm. that made the declaration. Right. As the application be filed, as the stay of execution or, uh, uh, application be granted, no. So as far as today is concerned, as far as the 1999 Constitution of Nigeria, is consigned today. Philip Shabu is the deputy governor of Edo State. Well, we, we are still following a lot of developments <laughs> and our litigations are already uh, in the court. We understand that they have filed to uh, counter that judgment and all of that. But let's move from that to yeah. um, his recent decamp to APC. Yes. Uh, this was a man <clears throat> who stood against your party in the 2020 election yes. in a bid to return Obaseki to office. Yeah. Does it now mean that uh, his return is giving confidence to the party or are you aware of also distracting you, you, People's Democratic Party? Because People's Democratic Party is saying that it's just a bit of distraction. Let me, uh, uh, Michael, uh, yes, of, political value. let me uh, give you another point of note. Mm. Every other party in the do state is in opposition, including the People's Democratic Party. Obaseki and his uh, 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 tyrannical government belongs to a party. No, but, the, but the ruling party is People's Democratic Party. Excuse me. I'm coming. Mm -hmm. Because Philip Shabu was part of Obaseki's government. Uh, Danobi, the national uh, uh, vice chairman of the PDP, South South, was part of, is part of, is from a do state. As we are talking, the, you saw, Philip Shabu did not just decamp. He decamped with legacy PDP. That is the foundation members of PDP in Edo State. Who feel disgruntled also? Who feel betrayed? Who feel not be carrying a lot politically? So it's not about Philip Shabu moving from PDP to APC. It's about the structure of APC, the foundational structure of PDP, moving to APC right now. What is going on in Edo State, or what is going to happen in September 21st, uh, 2024 is going to be mere a, a, a political consensus. It's a resolve of Edo people to vote out directionless governance in Edo State. It's not. It's beyond political party. It's not about giving strength or no strength because before now the resolve of Edo people is beyond APC or PDP. But, but some people will argue that the state government will use the set, I mean the powers that they have as a ruling the party. power in democracy belongs. There's no ruling party, right? I just told you. There is no ruling party in the do state. The power, the, the chief, power, the, 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 the chief executive. No, 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 no. It's not a, the, you know, what is the ruling? A ruling that you have a deputy governor that is not part of your party. A ruling that the state uh, uh, structure of your party all have the camp to the APC. But it looks as if the, the, the party is not really even a member. not even a member as far as I'm concerned. He's not a member of the party. He's on his own. He was jumping. Every, in, 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 everybody he was a member of APC before going to PDP. Uh, right now, right now, he has scattered the PDP, has made the foundation members of the PDP to leave him again. The man who was the chairman of APC in 20, uh, 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 prior 2020, Aslan Mojizo, Barista Mojizo, was the chairman of the state chairman of APC. He left with uh, Philip Shabo and Obaseki. Where is him today? 
The people he met, the Danambi that received him, the original, the PDP uh, uh, legacy group, which is the foundational PDP, that received Obaseki in 2020, where are they today? All right. Uh, they are also concerned, because I understand the move in 2020 was to fight Godfather Izzim Amin, was against Adam Tushimele as someone who wants to take charge of uh, the politics and governance in the new state, just like they've said in Lagos State, President Tinibu did say. But now, it seems Oshimule is also trying to seal force, force a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, force a party on the people of Edo. That's what the pe some of the people of Edo said are saying, that rather they should allow the people to make their choice. Because it looks as uh, if Adam Oshimule is making an impression on the people. Absolutely no. The, uh, rather, the reverse is the case. Is your party together? APC. Uh, uh, the most co uh, coercive political party in Edo State today going to an election. With absolute coercion, you saw the inauguration, the national inauguration by uh, Ganduje. Every member, everybody that contested the party primaries, the governorship primaries of the APC, have all resolved their issue, and they are all with the ticket, the candidacy of uh, uh, distinguished uh, Senator Mondo Pewolo and uh, Right Honorable uh, Dennis Osagbo Onure Idaosa. The, meanwhile, if you, take, if you take it back, why are they drifting from the PDP? Everybody that contested the PDP primaries today, they are no longer a PDP. Rather, they are the capital APC. From Ask Lemojeza, Deputy Governor Philip Shabu, uh, 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 the daughter of Esama uh, Bini uh, Kindo, Gabriela Ibenedio, Mosede Ibenedio, former Honorable. All of them, they are all working today directly or indirectly, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Obede Yama. These were all the governorship aspirants of the PDP. Where are they today? Oh, but he a man gave all his structure, including his campaign office, all to APC. What is going on in the Do State is political consensus. Are you are, are your party? We are doing referendum on the twenty first. It's referendum, not election. All right. Show us your workings. What have you done in eight years, Obaseki, that is making you try to practice the Godfatherism you criticized in twenty twenty? You are bringing your surrogates. Your godson, Aswa Igodalo, who is ironically your economic advisor for eight years, who has advised you or other whose uh, knowledge you have ruined the political, social, economic, and even traditional photos of those states. You have balkanized the states. You have teared the states apart. You have knocked uh, traditional rulers' heads together. Imagine attempting to balkanize uh, a kingdom that has spanned 2,000 years, the Great Bini Kingdom. The, 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 the People's Democratic Party will hold a different view regarding that. Because Politically, it's it's, 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 the it's, it's, the 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 level of democracy people. is not what you say. But it's the, what the people feel. I'm from Edo State, 18 local government. Ekewa Road is in the heart of Benin. Go and find out a car will be constructed. Obaseki has been constructing a single road for eight years, a Kenwa road. That is the heart of Benin. Are you not going to talk of the local uh, area or the rural area? Sobe, Sobe Farm, since 2017. President Buari handed over ESA Water Project to Obaseki for reticulation. President Buari completed it handed over in 2018, September. But the Just to reticulate the water project across ESA land, five local governments. Today, that project is still where it, where it was, where Buari handed it over. Let me digress a little. Today, in Edo State, have the second to the lowest budget for education. And you are telling, you told us that you are doing Edo best. Mm -hmm. You are giving the best to education. But so you budget, sorry, you are budgeting 26 billion for education in your 2024 budget. Meanwhile, the Office of the Governor is budgeting 90 billion for himself, budgeting 8 billion for Office of Secretary to the State Government. Right. Abolating 35 billion Honorable. for that for our state as of assembly. Meanwhile, education is 26 billion. Honorable, uh, the, the workers, I mean, some workers in your state, I would say that Saddam Sushimele is a workers friendly governor in terms of minimum wage implementation, 30,000 and all of that. There are other indices that some person might argue with you about that. But let's move to the fact that. Let me also clear that on the, on the minimum wage. I, knew, I know where you are, one, one, one of no, the no, 70,000 no, no, bits. Yeah, you cannot increase minimum wage when you are among the five states that borrows the five most indebted states in Nigeria that borrows from CBN to pay salary. Honorable, there will be no time to refute that. That is that. irony. There will be no time to refute that. Let's take a look at wave of Labour. I mean, Labour Party was felt in a door in 2023 election. Yes. Are you bothered about that matter? Because it seems it's on ground. It's also making worse in that particular state. Yeah, the, the, it, demo, the, the political demography in Edo say the voting pattern. Of, of Edo, Edo State is stratified politically to three senatorial districts. We have the Edo South, made up of several local governments. 
which is a Oredo, Ipobaoha, Urumode, Oriomo, uh, of Jan North East and of Jan Southwest. We have uh, the Edo Central, which is Esan. We now have Edo North, which has a Esan have five local government, Edo North, which is a Koko Edo, Esako West, East and Central, and uh, Owa, uh, Owa West and Owa, those are six local governments. The voting pattern, the popularity of the parties in, in this demography, we show, we reveal the strengths of the candidates in the, uh, the outcome of the election. Uh, Olomide Akpata is very well received in Benin Metropolis. It's from Edo South. And Labour Party, even when you, if you look at uh, the voting pattern of 2023 presidential election, Labour Party have a city senator from Edo South, which is the several local government. Mm. APC controls Edo Central, which is the distinguished senator Monday Opebolo. And distinguished senator Adam Shumoli Edo North. You understand? Which, who has absolute control, almost near 90% control of Edo North. That was even with the deputy governor, Philip Shabu, being a PDP. But right now, with all hands on deck in Edo North, it's 100%. Is there any significance? It's, it's 100 mm. Because the effect of, the, if, the impact uh, of uh, Olumide Abata in this whole equation will negatively still affect the remnant of uh, uh, Obaseki's uh, fashion of PDP. All right. Because the stronghold, the stronghold is Edo South. You understand? Not Edo Central, where Bewolo comes from. Not Edo North, where Adam Jomole, uh, 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 Ajoto from Akoko Edo, and Philip Shabu, mm. who are the political big wigs there. Mm. And that is APC uh, uh, control uh, 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 senatorial district. And where his hope lies is where Olumide Akpata is coming with his popularity, which is uh, uh, the metropolitan area. So he's distracting PDP. Of course. And uh, they have a city senator, the Labour Party, uh, Imbas what is his name? The, the Labour Party guy, who is the senator representing Edo South. It's from, uh, it's a Labour Party is from Edo South. So it's not, uh, we are going to, we are, uh, remember that our deputy governor is also from Edo South. The deputy governor, right honorable, our deputy governor candidate, right honorable uh, Dennis Idaosa, is also from Edo South. All right. Uh, and Egberan uh, Odubu, uh, former deputy governor to Oshumoli, is also from Edo South. The two times uh, governorship candidate of the party was also mm. a, a, a APC pastor, Osage Izeyam, is also from Edo South. So Edo South is going to be shared. Edo North is home and dried. And Edo Central is the heart of Obebolo. A city service senator, a performing senator. Honorable, they are concerned that, you know, Philip Shaibu has no political value in terms of delivery. There are some persons that said in the senatorial district at the last governorship election, he, I mean, it was a tough one for, for him based on the fact that Adam Zashimula was there. Uh, do you feel that there will be any difference? Imagine if it was a tough one for him and they got about 17,000 votes from his local government, Esako West local government. And APC got a uh, 20... But he has a strong... He has another counterpart. Uh, excuse me now. When he was a governorship candidate in 2020, in his local government, they got, uh, PDP got 17,000-something votes. Mm -hmm. And P uh, APC got a uh, 20,000-something vote. Now that he am, himself and Oshomole are now in the same family, father and son, is back home and is well-received politically, just add the 17,000 to the, to the 20,000. We are going to be having several thousand from almost fifty thousand from uh, Esako West. That is his political value. Mm. Does this therefore mean that uh, I mean Obasaki will really have anything to lose after all of this? Uh, uh, the only thing does, he, does, he, does it look like he has a political ambition? I don't know for him, but uh, the resolve of Edo people is first of all to rescue Edo from uh, uh, the Nebuchadnezzar political Nebuchadnezzar that is Holy Sway. Now, after then, we now know maybe the ESCC or whichever, because a lot has gone wrong in Edo State. In 2016, when it came to power, uh, the, the domestic debt of Edo State was about $28 billion. As we speak today, the total debt of Edo State is rocking about $600 mm -hmm. billion with $300 million in foreign debt, with mm -hmm. $150 million for erosion control. In borrowing and, you, and erosion is ravaging everywhere in Edo State. Just go and look at the statistics. It's, everything is it, it, it's crazy. So I don't know how it's going to, it's post election, it's post uh, office uh, 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 activities. It's less for him and God. Well, uh, People's Regulatory Party may argue that uh, uh, the governor is one of the best governors we have in PDP. But well, uh, it's, an, it's an uh, a negotiation. That, that if he's one of the best they have in PDP, then it uh, actually shows that the PDP have no governors. 
Mm. We also have blames of also APC. We've seen in Kogisa. We don't want to go into that, Honorable. I mean, I must appreciate you uh, for your in-depth analysis on the program. We're looking forward to see what effect uh, Philip Shaibu coming into APC really will me, I mean, will reflect on this election. We are looking forward to see yeah, that, that Yeah, it's a big one. Thanks so much, Haruna Bremo, APC uh, Campaign Council in the Media, a uh, member of the Committee of the Campaign Council in APC in the State for a time and your thoughts on the convention tonight. We're looking forward to see you again. Thanks Thank so you much. very much. Yes, we're going to break. And once you return from the break, we're taking a look at the, a lot of hits and uh, due to the economic challenges in the country. We'll also be looking at the trade of words between Dangote Refinery and the Nabu's uh, boss, Ahmed Farouk, uh, uh, the midstream uh, petroleum industry regulator, who are also having a controversial comment uh, between the Dangote refinery on what it means to establish crude, I mean, refinery. Uh, Dangote seems to already threaten to sell out uh, his refinery, uh, but we'll be looking at this understanding and what it means for uh, economic businesses to strive in the country. Uh, these two paths will form part of a discussion on the program, Big Talk. Do stay with us. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back, everyone, to the program Big Talk. And of course, uh, uh, we, we'll be taking a look at the mood of the country when you look at the economy. Uh, due to the food crisis, inflation, and all of that, uh, the House of Reps made an attempt last week at a plenary to commit 50% of their salary uh, towards uh, liver, I mean, also supporting the president in terms of giving back uh, palliatives and uh, some remedies to cushion the effect of the hardship. This has also pushed a lot of youths to start making plans for protests and all of that. But they have been concerned that there is a need to urgently address the issues we face in the country. A moment where we look at uh, the economic challenges, where you look at the fact that uh, some families are unable to feed. But it seems that attempts by the federal government as well to roll out some plans, some interventions, initiatives to cushion the effects. But how far? can we really point out to some of these things? Because we want to look at a situation where uh, the people can really start counting what uh, uh, remedy situations the government is also providing. My guest is a public affairs analyst and a legal practitioner uh, who, of course, will be trained light to understanding these and what government needs to do urgently to addressing this situation so it won't go out of hand. Uh, a dead chair, Felix, is my guest tonight. Thanks so much for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Yes. What is your assessment? Several interventions. 
president have given out to state government uh, some grants. House of Reps have slashed the salary 50%. Just like Oliver tweets, the people are saying it is not enough. It seems we can't really point out to many things your government are doing. Are you th do you think the government are not doing enough? Well, if you are taking a treatment for malaria and the malaria is not going, will you stop looking for drugs? It means the drug you're using is not effective or is not even for malaria at all. If the government have taken the right steps, the society won't be crying today. I will start with the handout the government chose to give. Mm. This government should have learned from the previous government. They came up with the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and came up with all forms of palliative which never get to the people. And then you're not talking about the federal government giving grains to the state governors, the same state governors who cannot account for the revenues that go to their states. You are giving them grains to give to who? And how will they give to the people? What, what, what is constitutionally in their hands to cater for the people? They've not been able to account for it. So I think the federal government did not give those grains for the people. It's a political settlement. It is for themselves to share, if at all there is any grain. Because I think common economics will tell you where the government should go. This food is farmed by a set of people. If it's imported, there are people importing it. Why not visit your economic policy of trade and relief? One of the economic policies is trade and relief. What the federal government should be doing is to look at, I mean, tra uh, trade and tariffs. Look at the tariffs over these imported foods. Rice, for instance. Take off the tariff. You really mean well for the people. Take off the tariff for a period of time so that the price of rice can crash. And then people have access to more food. You don't need to send food to any village. Once the price, Nigerians are not telling you they are not earning at all. No. But they are telling you that the money they are earning is useless in their hands. So what do you do? Take, bring out policies that will crash the price of food, not to send grains to anybody. So I think the government is heading in the wrong direction. It, it, it seems uh, uh, probably they may be missing out in the means of uh, distribution because, as you just pointed out, our state governments uh, are also dragging the federal government backward. Because when you look at sometimes the intention of the federal government, is to drive some of these development down to the grassroots. You've seen the intention of the president. He has granted, he has made moves to grant local um, autonomy, financial autonomy. You know the back and forth issues we had with state, yeah. gov with state government in driving this. Uh, to you, should it be that the federal government wants to make such an intervention? If you consider getting to the grassroots themselves, like local government passing through the local government chairman, because it seems, or some person are even arguing that palliative is not the is not a means to get out of this. It's not sustainable. It doesn't have an impact generally. Doesn't mean that they should not even in any way brings out some of these initiatives at all. We've seen school feeding program has failed. We've seen other interventions and initiatives of government seems not working. What do you think? Where do you think we are missing it? Thank you very much. I I I am not somebody who I'm not a blind follower. Neither am I a blind critic. I will applaud the government where they are doing right. But I will always say you are wrong when you are wrong. Now, where are we missing it? The government, the, the, the successive government before now, missed it by allowing the governors to have swallowed the local government. And I think this government have taken the right step. Kudos to the Mr. President and his Attorney General by pursuing that case to conclusion and winning for the local government the financial autonomy. But it is not yet Uhuru. If nothing is done about the election of local government,
government. If the election into local government is still in the hands of state governors, you have only changed the dynamics. You have only changed the ways that the governors will control these people. You just bring somebody who you can control and put him there, and he still return the money back to you. So while I applaud the president and his attorney general for having achieved that feat, we also push them to pursue in the same manner, taking off election into the local government offices back to INEC. It's better handled at the federal level. We are not saying INEC is 100% OK, but at least there will be a bit of control. And then when you talk about palliative, palliative is not for the crop of politicians we have today. It will not get anywhere. We saw what happened in co during the COVID-19. Palliative ended up in warehouses, in people's garages. And then when, it's, when the poor masses could not contain it anymore, we, we know what happened. We are saying, draw up a system that takes care of all, not a few that you know. I don't need to know Mr. President Ahmed Bolatinubu before I begin to enjoy Nigeria. I don't need to be linked to a senator, a minister before I be. I am a Nigerian, not because of my association with any individual, but by the right of my birth, as the Constitution says it, that's made me a citizen of this country. So I don't need to know no man before I begin to enjoy Nigeria. And you don't need to bring out things that have no means. From the beginning, it is faulty. It can never get to the, the targeted uh, level of citizens. All right. Uh, there are concerns also about the fact that um, some of the economy indices uh, shows that, um, I mean, once you invest, you are able to think. Uh, there have also been arguments, especially from the Labour Party presidential candidate, that uh, we need to do more of uh, uh, investing, producing, I mean, aware of also producing in your countries and also drawing importation. Uh, even some agencies and some groups have slammed government on why they had to open borders for 150 days, uh, you know, importation for grains and all of those. For you, what effort, what can you really point out to you, a level of uh, investment, level of production attempt by the uh, federal government? We've seen already what is happening in the Dan culture, which we'll be discussing on the course of this uh, program. We've seen the fact that uh, businesses are closing and leaving the countries. Uh, what, what, what are those indices that you feel that are not in any way portraying, you know, what it ought to be so that we, could, we should have more produ production in the country, more of companies coming into the country to work? Does it, does it look that there is also a missing line by the government? Because some of these things are having a lot of pressure on a currency. The moment where we are having more uh, of the importations, we still give crisis to Anaira. What do you think are the remedies and what should be done? Well, I, for any nation, Nigeria inclusive, once you miss from the starting point, the best you can do for yourself is to admit your failure and go back to the drawing board. Nigeria needs to go back to the drawing board. Why am I saying so? 1970, immediately after the Civil War, the nation drew for herself a development goal, set for herself a, a set of goals, five goals, which crystallized in 1973 to the development goals. And then we we'll ask ourselves, are we, 54 years after, are we pursuing any with sincerity? The answer is no. The first goal is to have a free and democratic society. Are we there? And that's the foundation of it all. If you cannot have a free and fair election, you are in trouble. The second is to have a just and egalitarian society. Can we boast of that today, 54 years after? The answer is still no. The next is for us to have a, a strong, united, and self-reliant society. Are we there? The answer is equally no. The fourth is for us to have a strong and dynamic economy. Can we boast of that today? The answer is equally no. And the fifth is for us to have a nation, a society that have opportunity for all. The answer is still no. We are not yet there. And why are we not there? Because 
serious successful leaders that we've had, both the military and the civilians, they seem to have forgotten this goal. They are not schooled on this goal. They choose to pursue other agendas. And once you miss it, then whatever you bring. What we're supposed to be having is successive government bringing out policies that will drive us towards this goal. When you, when you look at a nation like America, for instance, the difference between the Democrats and the Republicans is not the goal. The difference is in the means of getting to the goal. Before I got into your station here, there are from my location, I have more than three different routes to have chosen. I choose the one that fit me best. Assuming I'm to come with two, three friends, and we choose to leave that the same location, and one say, no, the other route is better. Our goal is to get here. We will certainly get here. And that's why you see nations who know, who aim at their goals, no matter the differences, they get there. Now, you can't be talking about achieving these goals and having a, free, a reliant economy without production. And that's why I agree with those who are, who, are, who are putting it. The starting point must be production. You must encourage production. Let me give you an instance. 20 Naira, 10 years ago, or like somebody put it, 1,070 1, Naira can buy you uh, 1,070 Naira can buy you a Peugeot saloon, right? In 1974-75. But today, that same 1,700 can only buy you a loaf of bread. What's that telling you? Has anything gone wrong? Has the Naira changed color or? No, it has lost its value. And how can your currency gain value? Your currency can only go gain value when you are producing and you are all you are sufficient, produce uh, sufficiently for yourself, and you have more than enough to export. And that gives value to your currency. When our Naira had value was when we have the textiles in Cardona. We have the cocoa working. We had the rice moving. But today, all this, if any government is telling you about creating jobs, they are, they are telling you they are creating ministries and agencies. That's not job. That's not what a serious economy think about. The government should only be thinking of how to create enabling environment for people to do business. I have friends who have uh, gone abroad. None of them is telling me he's working for American government. They're working for the private sectors there, and they're earning good money. Why? Because that society creates an enabling environment for entrepreneurs to survive and succeed. So for us to get any government that we can clap hand for, is that government that will begin to lay foundations for it? All right. There are a lot of concerns. I will also look at the fact that uh, a lot will be done in these uh, regards. Uh, do you feel that there's a missing line in the succession plan? I mean, when you look at the fact that uh, many people come with the agenda, sometimes five-point agenda, seven-point <laughs> agenda, uh, which at the end of the day, we can't, uh, may not really point out. We've seen the agenda of pre former President Muhammad Buhari, and uh, we also see that the President Tinibu is also working in achieving some of his agenda. But years back, I mean, years down the line, can this really reflect on like, a state of economy? Because you've been moving from one crisis to the other. And also, we also look at this issue of the fact that if anything goes up in Nigeria, it happens that <laughs> it can never really, really have to go down, this, which is not an issue. We'll go to the market now. What we are buying before then is not comparable to what. So manage these situations and give us the final analysis on it. Well. Um, I don't know any government that have pursued its own agenda before. They will come 10 point agenda, 9 point agenda. The only government, unfortunately, we cannot really talk about is the, the government of uh, Leti Aradua, who gave agenda and we saw him following that agenda. Now, you have agenda. How does that agenda align with the national development goal? I don't see anywhere where sharing of money, sharing of palliative 
will take us to where we should go. Do you understand? If you want to make a deaf man dance, it's not by playing music for the deaf. It's by you dancing. Whether there, is no, whether there is music or not, the moment you begin to shake your body, the deaf man will begin to dance with you. Do you, do you, do you get the point? So, Nigeria, we need a government that will look at, okay, this is where we want to go. Mm. This is how we'll get there. And people will see it clearly. As far as I'm concerned, apart from the political noise, I am confused. I am highly confused as to what the agenda of this government is. Do you get the point? I am confused because there is no clear pointer to this is where we are going. We can only get snippets of, oh, he has done this well. Like we so, talk so about some, the, some ministries seem to be doing well, like, uh, responding as well. Like we've, what? We've seen the minister of FCT completing project, which has sometimes has never been. <laughs> it's, it's, they've given him kudos for all of those things. Uh, it, it seems uh, uh, the fact that it has been a missing line in gov governance in the country. So well, mm. I will not take that away from him. Mm. Completing project is good. Do you understand? Completing project is good because it's budgeted for. But the question is. If the road is completed and I don't have food to eat, it's a problem. how does that road matter to me? If the road is completed and I cannot pay my children's school fees, how does that road count for me? Who are the ones using this road? I'm not saying you should stop that. Mm. But we are saying it goes beyond completion of road. In the first place, Completion of roads or building bridges is not something we should be clapping hand for government wow. for. Mm, well, well, Do you understand? Mm. It's, not, it's, not, it's not something we should be clapping hand for. It's not your money. It's budgeted for. It, it, it's your responsibility. It's probably because we are used to so many abandoned projects. And then sometimes when we finalize the completion, completion, it makes more sense. But I understand your point. Uh, a lot of uh, the, the food crisis. Yeah, he's, he's better than the one that left. Uh, yes, I, I, yeah, but mm. that's not going to take us to where mm. the, well, FCT, the FCT citizen, just mm. like any other state, they need more than roads, they need more than bridges. Generally, food. yes, generally. Government, government generally. I don't want to that. pick mm. uh, yes, 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 one yes. person. Mm. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Uh, thanks so much, Deche Felix, uh, a public affairs analyst and a legal practitioner. We understand the fact that um, the heat of even the planned protest by some youth is on the ground. Uh, People can no longer feed, and also a clarion call for government to sit up, just as a day chair Ali pointed out, uh, to go behind the indices and in the papers and start tackling the situations on ground, because there is on the ground. And of course, just like Oliver Twist, uh, the move by the House of Reps to slide your fifty percent—I mean, to slide your salary for fifty percent—Nigerians are saying is not enough. There are more to be done. Cut some cuts of governance yes, and do also a lot of bits to <laughs> tackle some of these issues. <laughs> Thanks so much, uh, <laughs> Mr. Felix. We may not have time to dwell on to all of these issues and controversy. We appreciate your time. Yeah, and that's back. where we have actually will get uh, the chair on. Uh, we'll, we'll be back again to look at these issues of the Nigerian Upstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority. The chief executive officer is facing with Dangote Refinery on some allegations. Uh, they claim uh, some has I mean, the reps have responded. Break. Stay with us. Thanks, Thanks so much. Yes, thank you. <laughs>